Hi friends, it's William K. I'm back for another video. So today we are going to see how we can write a bass line in the Riffer interface by Ample Sound. So check this out. The objective of this video is to create a bass line for the song you just heard. To do that, we need to create a harmony between the guitar pattern and the bass line. So just open your favorite Ample Bass VST, go to Riffa and let's start. Okay, so if we take a closer look at the guitar strumming pattern, we see that it is made of root notes and downstrokes with a little mute in the middle. So a good way to write bass lines is to be aligned with the root notes of the guitar pattern. It means that when the guitar will play the two first root notes, the bass should play a root note as well. So let's try it this way. So I'm back with Ample Bass VST and just go to the effects section and make sure that the reverb is deactivated. Then go back to Riffer, click on that button to create a new riff Make sure that the tempo of your DO is set at 90 BPM and that you have activated the Riff Sync toggle. Also make sure that the time signature is set at 4 slash 4 and that the Riff quantization value is set at 1 slash 16. And finally, make sure that you have 4 measures opened in the grid. So we said we wanted the bass to play root notes when the guitar does so. So as a reminder, the guitar plays a first root note on the first beat of the measure and another one slightly before the third beat. So let's do the same here. Just left click on the first string of the bass, right there, left click again, hold and drag it up twice. So we have an F sharp one. Then just left click at position 1.2.3 and an F sharp one should appear. Now we must adjust the note values, that is to say the length of the notes. So again, if we analyze the pattern of the guitar, the note values of the root notes are different. The first root note lasts one beat, while the second one lasts only half a beat. So we need to do the very same for the bass line. So just go over the edge of the first MIDI note, click, hold and drag it until position 1.2. Then do the same for the second MIDI note until position 1.3. Now to continue writing the bass line, we can use a very useful feature of Apple Sound's Riffer. So just right click anywhere on the first measure and select copy measure to measure number two. But instead of having F sharp one notes there, we'll have E1 notes because that is the chord progression we are following. So just click, hold and drag it down twice until you have an E1 and do the same with the second mini notes. Now for the third measure, we'll need to have a D2. So just go to measure number three and write A1 and transform it to a D2 and extend it until position 3.2 and do the same at position 3.2.3 and extend the note until position 3.3. Then for the fourth measure, you just go back to the second measure, select copy measure to measure number four but instead of having E1 notes, we'll have an A1. So just click, hold, 
and drag it up until you have an A1 node and do the same right here. At position 4.3, we are switching code to a B1. So just click, extend the nodes until position 4.4 and drag it up twice. And as a transition to come back to the first measure, we'll just have two little notes there, an A1 and a G sharp one, and that will be perfect. Alright, now that we have written the first part of the baseline, we need to continue and write the second part. So just listen to what we are dealing with. So I think for this part of the song, we'll need something quite similar for the bass line, but with a little bit more punch. So let's see what we can do. So before writing the second part of the riff, we should just export what we did with the little cross there into the MIDI track. And we should duplicate it twice and just group it that way. Then We'll rename it verse. So to write the second part of the verse, we should just have something more punchy. So a good way to do that would be to copy that F sharp one note and paste it twice there. Then let a blank space right here, but copy again or paste again the F sharp one note at the end of the measure. So we'll do the same in the second measure. Copy, paste, paste again, and paste at the end of the measure. The same with the D2 note. Copy, paste, paste, and paste here. And for the last measure, we'll just shorten the B1 note, copy it, paste, then we'll extend the riff, no, we'll export the riff, sorry, to the MIDI track, and we duplicate it, we group it, and we rename it verse 2. So to make it sound professional, we'll just have to go to the main view, and decrease the start knob down to zero. If we do that, we must close the plugin and make sure that the delay of the track in which the plugin is loaded is set at minus 50 milliseconds. Then we need a bass amp. So you can like load a bass amp plugin, which can be guitar rig or amplitude or any other solutions you may prefer. One really cool preset and really cool, uh, easy to use is the clean bass preset, which sounds super cool. And you can choose like another mic if you want to. And I like the Korn 47. It gives us a like a round up sound bass. So that is really cool. And if you want to avoid having scratchy sounds in the background, you can deactivate the fret sound toggle and then you have a really clean bass.
this video was about how to write a baseline in the Riffa interface of Ampore Sound. If you want more resources on how to create music with their VSDs, just check out the videos around me. And if you have liked that video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe and see you next time.